Man, I swear, billboard advertisements in games are so lame and fake. Who in the world would ever believe that any of this stuff is... Holy shit! The Cursed Knight is a new game for the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive developed by Game Geek Style Studio Creation and published by Broke Studio. The game is a mix of a shmup and a platformer, with the platformer bits being heavily inspired by Metal Storm for the NES. Well, actually, The Cursed Knight has a lot of different genres mixed, but I'll get to that in a second. I should point out, though, that even though the game is already finished with the publisher sending me a review copy, they are actually launching a Kickstarter campaign with the purpose of acquiring funds to manufacture the cartridges and boxes. So what this means is, while my game should look the same as all Kickstarter copies, there might be some differences once the game is finally out. But I'm not actually a time lord here, so all I can do is look at my own copy and see what it's like. Speaking of which, the game comes in a Sega Mega Drive style box. And man, I don't like this cover. Your main character seems to be lacking in detail. And there's no background, so it all just looks kinda basic to be honest. A bit bootleggy even. But then again, I did post a picture of the cover on my channel and my Twitter and people seem to enjoy it, so do you take my opinion on this with a grain of salt. Now, I should point out that the cover is reversible, and I feel that this side looks a little better, and I do like the traditional grid overlay. But it's still not a great cover art if you ask me. On the back of the box, things do improve, with some attractive looking screenshots and a small description of the game and its plot in both English and French. Inside, we find the cartridge and manual, and I gotta say, this is a really great manual. It's colorful, appealing, has some nice stylized images, concept art, and even a few sprites here and there, with the text being in both English and French. I only wish the manual were bigger, because other than that, this is an A manual. And if you're a modern Mega Drive developer and you're watching this video, you should most likely take a good look at this manual and draw some inspiration from it. Just make yours a little bigger if you can, please. The cartridge is also pretty good. The plastic feels nice and high quality in your hands, and the pin connectors are beveled and chamfered. Yeah, I took a crash course on beveling with Bob from RetroRGB, so now I am able to properly tell you if a game is beveled. Sadly though, taking decent pictures of the beveling is a pain, so uh, bear with me here. I know it's kind of hard to see it, but you can see the beveling at the end right here. Additionally, the cartridge is also chamfered, meaning that the edges are rounded out, which will also minimize stress on the pin connectors. Now sadly, I don't have a torque screwdriver, so I can't really open up this bad boy. I promise, I plan on getting one real soon. Overall, I feel that this is a pretty good packaging that is sadly held back by its box art. The cartridge shell is high quality, and the proper attention was given to the pin connectors, ensuring that it's safe to use with your system. I just kinda wish the cover art was better, any of them to be honest. But all things considered, this is still a pretty good packaging and far above other games we've seen on this channel. Booting up the game, you're brought to a language select menu, which, you know what? I kinda dig it. It even has a secret sound menu, and I think that's kinda cool. Anyway, once you get past all that, you see a small intro with the logos, which I like the idea, but the colors are all kinda washed out. And there's some weird dithering going on with this animation as well, but whatever, that's not a big deal. After all that, you see a screen where you're asked to pick your control scheme, and while you can play this game with a 3-button controller, it's really not ideal. In fact, my recommendation would be the 6-button controller with the gravity toggle on the shoulder button. You're then brought to a small gameplay window where you can get used to the controls, and as I previously mentioned, the game is a mix of a platformer with a shmup, so in the platformer sections you can run, jump, double jump, shoot and slide. 
the controls are kind of like Mega Man in that regard. Except that if you keep hitting the slide button, you can actually slide indefinitely. I'm not sure if this is intentional or an oversight on the developer's side though. With the shmup controls, you can shoot in either direction at will or charge up a special attack. Though, I'll be honest, I never actually used a special attack. I felt that it took too long to be charged and moved way too slowly to really be of any use, so I just simply gave up on it. Anyway, you play as Calder, a knight with a cybernetic armor who's about to marry the princess of… the Longville? Wait, as in Stefan the Longville? The dude who made the HDK that so many modern Mega Drive games use? Uh, okay. When the princess is suddenly kidnapped by a mysterious knight and it's your job to go and save her. And my first impression of the game is that, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not loving this. I mean, it's a competent shmup, I guess, but it's also kind of slow and boring. As previously stated, you can shoot in either direction. You also start with two different weapons that you can switch at any time. A regular pea shooter and a homing shot that has a much lower refire rate. And that's it. There are no other weapon pickups. You do at least get a weapon upgrade which increases the power of your homing shot and turns your pea shooter into a spread shot. But they can only be upgraded once and that's pretty much where your arsenal ends. Couple that with the slow enemy bullet speed and the relatively low number of enemies on screen and it all just feels kind of bland to be honest. And I know what you're thinking, that all I'm gonna do from now on is just bash the game and well, yes, I have more criticisms coming, stick around, this review has a plot twist. Even the visuals are kind of not really doing it for me. I mean, don't get me wrong, it has a ton of parallax scrolling, which I really love. But the background art itself is super basic, and I feel the colors are not properly balanced either. It's all just pretty much shades of blue. As you progress to the level, the sun will set, turning the background city into a mix of red and pink. But again, I felt that it needed more color, especially when contrasted with the low detail on the city. I know color balance is one of the many challenges when developing games for the Mega Drive or Sega Genesis, but I feel they could have done a better job here. I don't know, just compare it with something like Phantom 2040 for the Sega Genesis, where not only is the art more detailed, but the two different background layers and your main character have contrasting colors, making everything pop out more. Here though it feels that your character gets a little lost against the background. There's even some small bits and pieces that kind of show the developers did experience at creating games for the system. Like for example this shiny effect here, which I get what they were going for, but the execution was kind of lacking. Or how about these flags, where they left in a leftover pixel in one of its animation frames. You see what I mean though, as you play the game, you see what the developers wanted to achieve and what they actually achieved. Halfway through the level you start progressing on foot and I generally feel the on foot segments are better than the shmup stages. Though in this instance it's still kinda generic and unimpressive. Again, it's not that it's bad, it's just not great. You still have the same weapons as the shmup portions, but you'll also pick up a sword which lets you cause more damage at close range. Additionally, the level design here feels more intricate, as you'll often find more health and weapon upgrade pickups if you're willing to explore a little bit. But once again, the developers show their inexperience, as there are some instances where it's not clear if something is a wall or simply part of the background. Like this part here where I'm on a truck and I thought this part was a wall. As it turns out, it's just part of the background and I can stand on it. Still, there are at least some cool things here. Like for example, this Akira inspired bike advertisement. And most likely the greatest billboard I'll ever see in a video game. Ha! <laughs> I love this. I mean, this is actually exclusive to my early release copy, but it's still really cool. Anyway, once you reach the end of the stage, the mysterious knight reveals he's called Fawns. And then of course, you fight him to save the princess, like in every other video game. Well, okay, I did not expect that. 
Actually, yeah, let's talk about that. Not only is the text littered with references to indie Sega Genesis developers, but there's also quite a bit of violence and even swearing here. I don't know, it all just seems kind of unnecessary if you ask me. Anyway, so I kill Fonzie. It's too on the nose. Which is then followed by a pretty cool boss fight where this dude punches the screen and leaves broken glass marks. And I gotta say, I really love this idea. And then, finally, the first level ends. Yeah, I've actually played this game with two other friends and we all agree that the first level is just way too long and a bit dull. But now here's the thing, this game gets better. See, on the second level, you pick up the gravity reverse ability. And this works very similarly to what we see in Metal Storm for the NES. You can reverse the gravity once while you're in the air, but you need to touch the ground before you're able to do it again. And this adds a really cool dynamic to the level design. I mean, level 2 is still kind of boring, but that one's actually more of a tutorial level for your new skill. I also like how this firefly will light up the background and will run away from you if you get too close. Which I don't think I've seen any other Mega Drive game do this. But other than that, this is a visually bland level and the puzzle design is a little basic. But once you reach level 3 and onwards, it's like the game does a 180 flip. Suddenly, it gets good. It gets really good. I mean, just look at this level. I mean, sure, the backgrounds don't seem too impressive on a technical level, but the art style suddenly gets better. Like here, where you have a lot of negative space, but it couples that with some cool red pools, interesting looking statues, and the two background layers have different colors, which make them stand out. Suddenly, you got a really nice color balance, but better yet, the level design gets a massive boost. Because now you're using your gravity skill all the time, and it's really cool seeing all the ways that you can pull it off to your advantage, as different platforms can either be your ground or your ceilings depending on how you choose to approach each stage. But then you also have a lot of precision platforming segments that basically require you to master gravity skill, and these feel really good. Suddenly, you also have more enemy variety, more health and weapon pickups, and you even get a third weapon pickup which can also be upgraded, making both the on foot and the shmup sessions more fun as you switch between weapons ready in silver gun style. And the fact that you now have to juggle three weapons and their upgrades finally adds some depth to the shmup segments, not to mention the bosses get more interesting with more complex patterns and gameplay mechanics. Hell, even the music got good all of a sudden. And then you keep on playing even more and the game gets even better. Suddenly the shmup enemy patterns improve and the game becomes a lot more graphically impressive while also making it thematically interesting as you fight your way while inside a giant beast. Then you get to the level after that one and look at this! Now you're even further inside the beast, fighting these monsters within while you're in a really cool setting and despite what you might think, no, this is not a maze! The game really does give you multiple paths to reach your destination, with different pickups along the way, and the level design and ways you keep using your gravity abilities just keep getting more and more interesting. And then you get to this boss fight and what is going on here? When did this game get so awesome? Where did this game go? How did we get from here to here? Literally, the first two stages were long, dull and uninteresting, and then it becomes an okayish game, then pretty interesting and suddenly it gets really awesome. And then after that you have the best shmup stage in this entire game. What is going on? I'm so lost right now. I don't know what's happening anymore. It's like the devs walked up in a meeting room and were like, hey bro, yeah bro, you know the game we're making? What about it? What if we actually made it good? Good. Good. Well, shit, I never thought about that. And make it good they did. They made it really good. I almost have to question why they left the first two levels as they are in the game in the first place. 
The game honestly would have been better if they were removed altogether, or at the very least heavily reworked. Even the tongue-in-cheek, profanity-filled dialogue is suddenly gone, as are the references to other Mega Drive developers, and honestly, the game is better for it. It's just a shame the first third of the game has to be so dull and uninteresting before you get to the good parts. I mean, to be fair, level 2 does have some cool scenes. Like, remember that Akira bike we saw before? Yeah, you actually get to ride that, which is pretty awesome. And you get to view it from the side and the back. Though this part kind of looks like an NES game. But it's still really cool how you sometimes get some small gameplay portions that are completely different from the rest of the game. I mean, the level itself is just okay, and the dialogue here is full of spelling mistakes for some reason, but it's still a cool, neat little extra. But it's not until this portion onwards that the game just suddenly gets really good, and some of the bosses look like they could have been the cover art for a heavy metal album. I especially love all the body horror themes, it just makes it so visually interesting. I just cannot get over how much this game surprised me. Oh, and I should also point out that along the way, you'll find permanent upgrades for your character. You'll get the sword and the gravity ability as I said before, but you'll also pick up the laser weapon, which is usually the most useful one, especially when upgraded. You can also pick up permanent health upgrades and these crystals, which once you get all three, will give you a small health regeneration bonus. And man, I just really gotta praise the level design with all the cool stuff you can do with your gravity reversibility. I would almost argue the game would have been better if it were a straight action platformer. It's just that the shmup levels take a little longer to get good, though I really enjoy the final two stages. But then you have stuff like this boss fight, where you have to jump between platforms and reverse your gravity to gain more maneuvering space, which is downright brilliant. So, is the game any good? Well, a third of it is not that great, a third of it is pretty good, and the final third is amazing, and I don't know how to rate this. It's almost like you're playing two or three different games, especially with how many game modes there are. Now the issue is that this makes the game feel inconsistent, and there's a good chance that you will run into one or two genres that you're just not that into. I honestly think that if the team had focused on just one gameplay mode, preferably the platformer mode, and then maybe add just one or two bonus segments, the Cursed Knight would have been stronger for it. And I should also point out that the game starts out really easy, but the difficulty will spike quite a bit towards the end. Though luckily, you have infinite lives, so you can keep trying as many times as you want. With that said though, the game will keep track of how many lives you lost and how long you're taking to beat the game. If you take too long, you will not get the good ending. Spoiler alert, I didn't get the good ending. Overall, The Cursed Knight is a mediocre, good and amazing game all at the same time. It's an inconsistent experience that is honestly just shy of true greatness. Had the level design towards the first half been improved, this could have been one of the Mega Drive greats. As it is though, it's still a really good game during the second half. And again, it's not like the first two levels are bad or anything. They're okay. Not great, not bad, just okay. It just feels like there's a bit of a missed potential here, although more sticky billboards would have been nice. Now, if you want to buy this game, the publisher Broke Studio is launching a Kickstarter to produce physical copies. Basically, the game itself is already done, and they just need the money to manufacture the cartridges. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description. As for the game itself, the potential is mostly there, even if it is a little bit squandered. Thankfully, the good parts more than make up for the bad ones. And if you feel that the first two levels are simply not for you, trust me, it gets better. It gets way better. Hey everyone, thank you for watching Stika's Retro Corner. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell and share this video. All that fun social media stuff. And you can also support me on Patreon. It may not seem like it, but even one dollar is a really big help in keeping this channel going. I would also like to thank my high tier Patreon supporters, Anthony Ryan Bennett and Jen Ru. Thank you for helping make this channel better. Anyway, I hope you have a great day. Bye!